Praise the Lord. It's another Friday, and Friday means worship day. Hallelujah. We're excited that you're joining us for worship today. Hey, since we still have some time before we start our worship, why don't you just take this moment to share this worship service on your social media feed, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram or in YouTube. Well, I want you to share it to your friends and family. Now, now. G, G, go. I mean, it's church day. Hallelujah. You can tag and invite your family and friends. Amen. And I'm so excited today for what God has in store for all of us. Because, you know, we're starting a new teaching series today. Hallelujah. And also, we're going to have our communion on the first Friday of the Bear Month. Imagine that. Hallelujah. You know, in the Philippines, we have this, like we call the Bear Month, starting September, October, November, and December. And, you know, it's like a countdown towards Christmas. And this is what I received from the Lord. Bear. Bear. Sounds like bear. You know, bear fruit. What I received from the Lord is all of us will going to bear fruit this coming, you know, uh, four months left from 2021. You know, from all of the losses we had, you know, previous months that the devil uh, stole from us. I believe God is giving us fruits. But, you know, the, the labor of our hard work and the labor of our you know uh commitment the labor of prayers we're doing to the lord i believe god will give us fruits we're gonna bear fruit hallelujah hallelujah receive that in jesus name and uh also make sure that you have your bread and juice ready amen because later on we're gonna have our communion but in a couple of minutes we're gonna start uh worshiping the lord and I encourage you to sing along with us because I believe the Lord is speaking through the lyrics of these songs. And, you know, just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. I'm going to call on the worship team and let us jump into worship. Amen.
Jesus. And as we sing our next worship song, Church, I want you to declare this verse into your life. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4, it says there that for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you victory. Amen. Cast all your battles to the Lord, all your burdens, all your fears, your doubts, for He's the, he's the one, the only one who will fight for you. He will turn your battles into victory. Amen. Thank you, Father.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Salamat, O Lord. Purihin ang iyong banal na pangalan. Purihin ka at ang iyong banal na salita. Purihin ka magpakailan.
Every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the last word, strength. The Hebrew word is ma'od, and it occurs some 300 times in the scriptures, and it doesn't actually mean strength. There is a perfectly good word for strength in Hebrew, and ma'od is not it. In fact, the Shema is one of the only places in the whole Bible where ma'od is translated as strength. So, what's up with that? The most common meaning of ma'od is very or much. It's what grammar nerds call an adverb, a word that comes alongside other words to augment their meaning. For example, in Genesis chapter 1, God looks at the world that he's made and six times he calls it good, But then the climactic seventh time, he says, it is ma'od good, that is, very good. Later in Genesis, in the story of Noah, the flood waters keep rising and they become ma'od powerful, or extremely powerful over the land. In the story of Cain and Abel, Cain wasn't just angry at his brother, he was ma'od angry. Or when Saul became the king of Israel, he was ma'od happy. So you can see why ma'od occurs hundreds of times in the Bible. It's a really common Hebrew word that intensifies the meaning of other words. Very this, or really that. However, biblical authors could use ma'od in ways that are unique. Like when they want to increase a word's force to total capacity, they'll say ma'od twice. So Jacob became ma'od ma'od wealthy with flocks and camels and donkeys and servants. Or the Israelite spies went to investigate the promised land and they say, The land we pass through is ma'od ma'od good. So it's pretty clear, ma'od doesn't mean strength in terms of muscle power, but rather very or much. 
So let's come back to the Shema, where people are called to love God with all of their heart, that is, their will and affections, and with all of their soul, that is, their whole life and physical being, and with all of their ma'od, that is, with all of their muchness. And while that sounds kind of funny, you also kind of get it. If ma'od can intensify any word's meaning to total capacity, then this final thing that you use to love God isn't a thing at all. It's actually everything. Loving God with your ma'od means devoting every possibility, opportunity, and capacity that you have to honoring God and loving your neighbor as yourself. It's the most wide and expansive word in the Shema. Ma'od can refer to almost anything. Which raises one last and really fascinating point. Because this word was capable of many nuances of meaning, ancient Jewish communities interpreted ma'od in the Shema in different ways. So the ancient Jewish scholars who translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek, when they came to ma'od in the Shema, they translated it with the Greek word dunamis, that is, power or strength. This is the interpretation adopted by most modern translations. But if you look at the ancient Aramaic translations of the Hebrew Bible, you'll discover that these scholars interpreted ma'od to mean wealth. Money is a concrete thing that opens up all kinds of opportunities to love God by giving away resources. And when Jesus was asked about the most important command in scripture, he quoted the Shema. And he used two words to unpack the meaning of ma'od. He said, love God with all of your mind and with all of your power. Both are human capacities that can be used to love God in an infinite number of ways. So which of these interpretations of ma'od is right? Does it mean strength or wealth or mind? That's the wrong question. The word ma'od doesn't limit the number of ways you can show love for God, just the opposite. The point is that everything in a person's life, every moment and every opportunity, every ability and capacity offers a chance to love and honor the one who made you. It's a call to love God with all of your muchness. And that's the meaning of strength in the Shema. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you, Joanne, and the whole worship team for leading us into worship. Praise God, you know, we finished our Shema Word Study Series. Hallelujah. Thanks to the Bible Project. You know, we get to have, you know, a deeper understanding of what Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4 to 5 says. You know, with an understanding of the Hebrew words used on this verse, it gives us, you know, a fresh revelation of who our God is. So don't miss out the new topic that we're going to start next week about the book of Joshua, brought to us by the Bible Project. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that we love doing here at Christian Limited Church is not only worshiping God with a lot, with our singing and in songs, you know, we also love to worship God through our giving. And I have a verse here in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 16, which says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Amen. God loves it when we are generous with our lives, with our time, and with our resources. And He loves it specifically when we are generous with our finances. Because, you know, when we give back to God what is rightfully His, you know, like our tithes and offerings, it really, it really is a perfect way for us to put Him first in our lives. Amen. And so, you know, I want to thank you. We want to thank you so much for your continuing you know, in giving, and if you'd like to join us today in giving, here are some information showing on your screen right below on how you can give. Amen. And God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is going to return back to you a hundredfold. Amen. Now, some important news. I want to share, you know, what's happening at Grace Unlimited, and I would like to thank the Lord for First of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for the souls who signed up for our baptism. We had our baptism last Friday, and here are the pictures. And praise the Lord for these wonderful souls. And I'm sure there's a lot more coming in, so watch out for the next baptism dates. Also, on a very exciting news, I'd like to announce coming October 1 and October 8. I want you to mark your calendars and save the date. October 1 and October 8, you know, we'll be having our Grace Unlimited Prayer and Worship, not online, but on site. Amen. You heard me right. You know, last year we did it online, but this year we're going to be doing that on an on-site gathering once again. Hallelujah. 
can wait for that day. We're gonna be singing, we're gonna be dancing, we're gonna worship the King of Kings, and we're gonna have some, you know, time praying, of course, with one another. Hallelujah. Are you excited for that? So watch out for the registration links that will be shared throughout this week. And make sure you book your seat early because, you know, it's getting full very quickly. Amen. Amen. So what you can do in the meantime as we wait is to cover us with prayers. Always keep us in your prayers so that, you know, we will have another victorious event in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a huge honor to bring the Word of God to you today, and I'd like to welcome all of you once more to our worship service at Church at Home, and I'm excited to be in church today. I hope you are excited too, because we're going to start a new teaching series, like I said earlier, and you pick the best day to be at church today. You know, we're about actually to spend nine weeks together doing a book study on the book of James. This will be the first time, you know, we're going to do that in our Friday church service. And this will be by far <clears throat> the longest series we will do. You know, and normally we don't have a series that long. Imagine nine Fridays, nine weeks. But believe me, we're going to learn a lot from this series. You know, so why the book of James? You know, initially when I was thinking and planning and studying about this series, my first thought <clears throat> of the title of this uh series is called Lebron and James you know Le Lebron and James so Lebron and James like in Tagalog you know in English it means the book of James but uh, I think this <laughs> this title will not work you know because first of all I'm not a big fan of Lebron James but uh, you know that's another topic to be discussed so I just decided the uh, study of the book of James the book of James. Why the book of James? You know, the book of James is incredibly practical and there's a lot of spiritual lessons we can learn from it. You know, this is not like the book of Revelation or the book of Isaiah or the book of Ezekiel, which, you know, has a lot of prophecies and lots of, you know, uh, some uh, illustration and uh, a picture of what's going to happen in the future. It's not like that. Nothing like that. This is like, you know, a heart to heart talk. You know, practical teachings, straight to the point, because it deals with a lot of topics that's about our character, our Christian character. Also, it was written to a scattered church, you know, a church that was not able to meet, you know, which kind of you know, reminds us of our situation today, right? Amen. So let's jump into it. Let's start by reading, of course, James chapter 1 and verse 1. It says here, James. Wow, James. And this is kind of a typical biblical instruction, just like the epistle. This is kind of form of a letter. You know, he's, he's just letting you know who the author is, who he is. You know, James. He says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's stop there for a minute because this is really interesting. And it's awesome that he introduces himself simply as a servant, you know, and it shows us of his humility. You know, James is such a humble person. I mean, why did I say that? You know, history tells us that this guy, James, actually is the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know. And imagine that, you know, I was thinking if I am the brother of Jesus, you know, I would have a name drop right there. And, you know, I would say, hey, everyone, I am Jeff, the brother of Jesus. You know, Jesus, the son of God. 
I am his brother, you know. I mean, flesh brother, you know. But he didn't do that. He didn't brag about it, you know. I mean, it shows us his true humility. And also, he's also a pastor of a church in Jerusalem, you know, the founding church of Christianity. Then it says there, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. So that church in Jerusalem is scattered. That is, you know, that's what I'm talking about earlier because Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 9 tells us that, you know, about because the persecution has broken out and led by, you know, Saul at that time, the Christian church has been under persecution and they're all scattered. So, you know, they all left Jerusalem and, you know, uh, go to another places. And so James is pastoring a church that can no longer meet together. I mean, does that sound familiar to anybody today? I mean, this is so incredible for us to learn into, especially for me, you know. Uh, this is a pastor of a church and a group of people that can no longer meet together. And so this entire book is geared towards helping them, you know, how to live out their faith because, you know, they can all gather, like similar to what's happening to us, you know. Uh, it doesn't mean that if we can meet physically together, it doesn't mean the church or our faith will stop. No. Amen. So uh, that's why I'm telling you this is going to be a great series. And James is a great pastor, very practical in his teaching because his whole goal is to help his people learn how to live in a new reality. You know, how to live in a new normal. Amen. Wow. It's kind of like very similar. You know, all of the topics that, we're, that we'll teach you about on this series are very practical. And in fact, the book of James is known as the Proverbs of the New Testament. You know, because there's lots of tons of wisdom in here. And it's going to help us in our daily life. Anybody here excited about this series? Can I see someone typing an amen there? Come on, come on. Are you excited? Let, let's show a sign of faith. Amen. <laughs> so... Here we go. So the title of the first topic is, you know, this is not going to be a surprise anymore. Trials and temptations. Trials and temptations. Why, why is that not a surprise? I mean, come on, you know, 2020 until 2021. It makes total sense that, you know, uh, it will be great to talk about trials and temptations since, you know, this pandemic starts until today. Everybody is in a trial and in, and in a lot of temptation in, in some ways. And James, you know, being full of wisdom and a good pastor, he talks to his people about trials and temptations because I'm sure he knows what his people are going through. And that's the first thing that he wants to address to help his people understand that trials and temptations are coming and it's normal. It's part of life. And he wants them to know, you know, how to walk through that and how to live, you know, walk out victorious on trials. No, I mean, let me put this up here. I believe this is kind of like our motto or the kind of like the big idea today. And I want you all look look for this because this is, you know, what James is really telling to his people and God is telling us today. Look at this. If we don't quit we win if we don't quit we win i'm gonna say it once once more if we don't quit we win now i want you to declare it over yourself i want you to declare that if i don't quit i win if i don't quit i win amen hallelujah now james in james chapter 1 and verse 2 and 3 it says here we're gonna start with trial first so i'm, I'm gonna uh, 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 break down my uh, message today in two parts. First part, we're going to talk about trials. And then the second part, we're going to talk about temptation. So first, trials. So what about trials, Pastor? Verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 says here, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Now, I want you to remember this. Trials are situations that happen to us. You know, 
these are things that we don't generally have any choice on what's going to happen. I mean, hindi po natin pwedeng piliin o i-filter or, or i-select kung anong klaseng trial ang gusto nating ma-experience, right? Meron ba rito no, na nagawa na? Ay, gusto ko ganitong trial lang, yung sakit ng ipin o yung headache lang. Pero yung financial trial or health issues, I don't want that. No, we do not have a choice and we cannot select on what's going to happen. No? It's, like, it's just like, you know, we're just minding our own business and then boom, all of a sudden we have a health issue. You check with a doctor and the doctor gave you a bad news, no? Or we're just going through life and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a uh, uh, redundancy in your office and you lose your job, you know. Or maybe we've been hit by some financial issues. I mean, think about it. There's a million different kinds of trials, no? Iba't iba klase, from marriage to parenting to career growth. And these are things that come out of nowhere, right? All of a sudden, it just came, diba? And we just got to work ourselves through them. You know, ang kailangan lang natin is talagang pagdaanan itong trial na to. We didn't cause it, but you know, sometimes yung iba po, mga bagay na tayo yung may dahilan kung bakit tayo nasa trial. But that's not what I'm going to be talking about, you know. Those trials that, uh, you know, just hit us, uh, Randomly, you know, yung po'y pag-uusapan natin. May it be big things or even the small things of life, you know. The things the things are that can just be so annoying. Alam niyo yun, di ba? Sometimes you just have this bad day because, you know, uh, you just woke up in a bad mood. Hindi mo alam bakit, no? It's just things annoyed you. Anybody here had a bad day lately? I mean, you know, having a bad day can be a trial to someone, Right? Lalo na kapag ka nagkapatong-patong talaga yung, yung problema natin. No? What else? I mean, trials like this global pandemic, you know. Alam niyo, laki yung perwisyo talaga nitong COVID, di ba? You know. And, you know, it always breaks my heart whenever I see, you know, a candle or a black profile picture sa Facebook, you know. As if it now becomes like a trending event, you know. Ang ibig po sabihin is yung rampant loss of life. Amen. And I'm really praying na for those of you na naka-experience po ng uh, loss of a loved one lately, I pray and I declare that our God, the God of comfort, will comfort you, will comfort your family, and strengthen you on these tough times. You know? I believe that at some point, this God has to stop, right? No, hindi naman po palaging ganito dapat. At hindi po tayo dapat pumayag na palagi na lang ganito. Na, na naging normal na greeting na natin is condolences to the whole family. No, that's not supposed to be it. It has to stop, right? And you and I has a big role in stopping this pandemic. Talaga, Pastor? Simple tao lang ako. Meron akong big role para ma-stop itong pandemic. I'm, I'm sure... You know, I'm sure lots of scientists and medical specialists are doing their best, you know, in developing better medicine, better cure, better vaccines, you know, but as Christians, meron po tayong part to play here. You know, ano pastor, kailangan ba mag-wear ng mask o kailangan lang mag-sanitize ng hands? No, I'm not talking about that. Yung pong part na kailangan nating i-play on this, yung role po natin as a Christian is to pray. And someone type there, I will pray. Amen. Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, I'm going to start a prayer challenge. And if you want to join with me, here's what you got to do. Anybody here interested to join? So if you want, and then if you're interested, here are the things that you have to do. First, you have to set an alarm or a reminder on your phone. I'm sure all of you has a mobile phone, you know. Set an alarm or reminder between 9 p.m. in the evening to 11 p.m., you know. But you can choose what time that is convenient for you to pray. Uh, because once that's set, you know, and this is the second thing that you have to do, I want you to pray three prayer points. So, na set mo na yung reminder. After you set it, you have to pray three prayer points. And here's the uh, first prayer point. I want you to pray or declare or speak.
speak healing, speak life to anyone you know who has COVID or have been, you know, uh, sick because of COVID. Or well, not even just COVID, any kind of sickness. If your loved ones, if you have your loved ones that is sick or, or friends that you know that is sick, pray for them, speak healing, speak life to them. And of course, the second thing is to curse, curse or cast out COVID-19 on the face of the earth. After you pray for the, those people who are sick, I want you to cast out or curse, curse out COVID-19 on the face of the earth. Wait, Pastor. Tama ba yung narinig ko na sabi mo you want us to curse? Yes, you heard me right. I'm, you heard me right. I'm talking about cursing. But in, in a biblical way. Because I'm taking this as an example from the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 12 to 24. I think and I'm sure you are fam very familiar with this story. You know, this is the story when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And after he cursed it, it withered. You remember that story? And I do believe we can do the same way with COVID-19. We can curse that COVID-19 to dissolve. We curse COVID-19 to evaporate. We curse COVID-19 to exterminate, eradicate on the face of the earth. Whatever, you know, things that you can uh, get rid of COVID-19. Curse it to the root. It will never come back in Jesus' name. Is it possible? Yes, I believe it's possible with all of my heart. Because let me show you what happened next after Jesus cursed that fig tree on, on Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and 24. This is what it says there. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Can someone type there, have faith in God? Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. But think of it. COVID-19 is smaller than a mountain. You know, if we command COVID-19 to evaporate, to be eradicated, and believe without a doubt in our heart, I believe it will happen in God's perfect time. Amen. Verse 24 says there, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, see, he's, he's giving us here the key, ask in prayer. Whatever we ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. So we believe and we claim the answers to that prayer point that I'm talking about earlier. And you have received it and it will be yours. What a wonderful promise, diba? Gandang pangako, galing sa salita ng Diyos, no? You heard me said this before. You know the word push? What does the word push mean, Pastor? Pray until something happens. Push. Pray until something happens. I think this is the right time to push praying, right? Push praying. You know, can, I, can someone type there, push? If you want to pray for this, push mo yan, kapatid. This is the time we need to push this. Amen? Push me in prayer. Hallelujah. Now, and here's the third prayer point. Third prayer point is this. Pray for our church. Praying for our church means praying for our, you know, church family, everyone in our church. And pray for me. Pray for the pastor. Pray for what? Pray for protection against, of course, COVID and have a good health for everybody. You know, our leaders, our members of our church. Amen. And I hope you'll join with me on this prayer challenge. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to be starting tomorrow. Amen. Saturday, 9 to 11 p.m. Our prayer challenge. Until when, Pastor? Until when this challenge will be? Until COVID is totally gone. We will never stop praying. The Bible says, Pray without ceasing. I think this is the right time to exercise that. You know, we will never stop praying until COVID is, you know, it's just a memory in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Going back to our topic, James, <clears throat> showing again verse 2 and 3. It says there, now, these are trials. Now, it's very clear here that on this verse that says that God doesn't cause these trials. But this verse tells us that God wants to use them 
Amen. Now, here's the first lesson that we can learn from the book of James. Number one is this. God wants to use trials to mature us. God wants to use trials to mature us. Now, we have to remember God's plan for us is to prosper us and not to harm us. Do you believe that? I believe that. Amen. But when these trials came, you know, uh, God uses them not to harm us, but to mature us. To mature us spiritually. I know some of us, including me before, you know, has a very difficulty processing and accepting this. Kasi naman, di ba, I mean, sino naman matutuwa kapag ka nasa under trial ka, di ba? And most probably, ha, all of us here has a lot of question about it, di ba? Para ko, marami tayong tanong. Can, you know, can God use another method of maturing us, di ba? Pwede naman sigurong gumamit si Lord ng ibang way para maging mature tayo. But to answer that, we must understand first a couple of practical things here. What are the practical things we need to know? Here's number one. Get God's perspective. Very practical. Alamin muna natin kung ano yung perspective ni Lord. I mean, uh, if we're going to make it through a trial and experience the, you know, good God wants for us, it's, it, it's got to start with the right attitude. Kailangan po, tama yung attitude natin para malaman natin but but ganito yung experience natin you know we got to get the right perspective that's how James starts his book di ba sabi nga doon sa sa verse 2 consider it pure joy i mean some of you are like come on James really <laughs> consider it pure joy are you telling me that the I need to be happy when I'm in trial. <laughs> I mean, tell you honestly, this verse is is always like screaming at me when I'm reading it, you know. It's like kind of like a red flag because like out of nowhere, you know, this man is asking us or asking me to consider something joy that is not joyful, to be joy when it's not joyful. I mean, for me, joy is going to a music store and to buy a new guitar. I mean, that's for me. Joy for me is eating a McFlurry with Oreo, sitting on my couch and watching some anime. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's joy for me, but not under trial. But to be honest, you know, I think there's a lot of truth actually in this reality. And so James Poe is not saying like, like your, your trial is going to be fun. Hindi po ganun yung ibig sabihin ni James na kapag yung trial natin ay magiging masaya at... You know, kagalak-galak, hindi po ganon. That's not what he meant. Because that's not real. Hindi po totoo yon. But what, what he's saying is this. You didn't have a choice about your trial, but you do have a choice about your attitude. Wala po tayong choice sa ating magiging trial, but meron tayong choice kung paano yung magiging attitude natin bilang Kristiyano. Come on, church. In fact, this word right here, consider, in a Greek word, it means suppose. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like this. You know, well, I'm I'm in this trial, so I suppose I could be upset about it and be miserable, or I suppose I could let God give me joy. I mean, do you get what I'm saying? I don't know which side you want to be on, but I'm just going to choose the joy side. I mean, come on, diba? So, pastor. Do you mean uh, I'll just laugh at my trials? Well, pwede rin yun. Di ba? Sabi nga nung kanta, tawanan mo yung problema. Pero it, it, it's not literally <laughs> may problema. No. If you do that, you're, you're crazy. Parang ang sira. No, hindi ganon. Ibig mo sabihin nun, uh, let the joy of the Holy Spirit bubble up in your soul. You know? you know, the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 18, verse 10, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What do you mean the joy of the Lord is my strength? Because when we have this joy coming from the Lord, it will give us strength to move on, strength to have hope again, strength to face the trial, you know, diba? Without that joy, your life's gonna be miserable. That's why you have the choice. Gusto mo maging miserable na lang? Or you can choose joy. Strength to face a trial. I mean, 
I mean, knowing that God is with you, di ba? Alam mo na kapag ka under trial ka, kasama mo si Lord. God is fighting for you. God is on your side. Amen. Can I see someone typing an amen there? Di ba? If it's available, if joy is available, I want it. I will choose it. May iba po yung perspective mo, no? Na even though you are, you are in trial, people will, will, will you know, uh, be surprised. Hey, what's happening to you? I know you got a big problem. Napakalaki ng problema mo. Pero but anjan pa rin yung joy mo? It's because from the Holy Spirit. Because the joy of the Lord keep us strength. Amen. And then secondly, you know, uh, we we got to get God's per- God's perspective. And second thing is we need to trust God's process. Trust God's process. God's at work. No doubt about that. He's working behind the scenes. Even when we don't see it, He's working. You know, because He's the way maker. We got to trust it. James says this in verse 4. Let perseverance finish its work. So you may be mature and complete. No, clear po sabi, para daw po tayo maging mature and complete, not lacking anything. Trust God's process. Honestly, at some point, we must let God be God, di ba? I mean, I know all of us are asking this God, asking God this question. Why? Why, Lord? Why me? You know, why? Of all the people, why? You know, and God will give us just limited information. We don't know a lot, but what we do know is more than enough. And what do we know? We know that God is good. And whatever He is in store for me or for you, I know the result is always good because God is good. I'm just going to trust God in this process and trust that He will get me on the other side. You know? uh, I will trust Him that He will walk me throughout this trial. Because if we don't quit, we win. Remember that? If I don't quit, I win. Wag pong mag-quit. Amen? Moving on to the second lesson on what we can do in the middle of a trial. Number two is we can use these trials to draw closer to God. We need to realize our need for God more than ever when we're in a trial. Isn't that true? Diba? Kapag nasa trial tayo, dapat uh, alam natin, ma-realize natin that we need God more than ever. C.S. Lewis says this, he has a great quote, and he says, God whispers to us in our pleasures, He speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us in our pain. It is His megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And I think collectively because of this pandemic, all of us are roused right now, diba? I mean, lahat po tayo nagulantang, nabigla, and I'm sure, uh, Nakuha po ni Lord yung attention natin because most of us, all people like comfort. And we all lost comfort. We thought we had control, but we lost control. You know, man has become so proud of himself that he thought that he says to himself, I have things under control. But we lost the control. Diba? And here we are in the middle of this moment and we're uncomfortable. And God is saying, don't miss that chance to get close to me. And someone type that in the chat. Don't miss the chance to get close to God. Don't miss the chance to get close to God. And again, James is very practical. So, so how can we practically do that? First, you need to ask God for His help. Ito na po yung practical application nito. You know, it's such a deep sign of intimacy that in the midst of our pain, the midst of our trial, we're reaching out to Him. You know, it's a sign of intimacy. Reach out to God for help. That's what James uh, says in verse 5. Sabi niya doon, If you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And I love that he talks about wisdom here because, you know, wisdom... Wisdom doesn't change our trials or circumstances. Hindi po may mapapalitan ng wisdom yan. Uh, hindi po may iba ng wisdom yan. But it gives us a bigger picture 
of why you know we're we're on it it connects us to the big picture so obviously wisdom is important but i highlighted this next part because i want you to realize the depth of it you know we can ask god for anything whatever help we need in our trial whatever help we need in the moment of tough time god is ready I mean, this is one of the most beautiful verses in the New Testament. Imagine that. To give us generously. He's willing to give us generously. He's not burdened by that. In fact, His name is Provider Jehovah Jireh. He's waiting for us to come to Him and say, Lord, I need help. And He will pour out His blessing that will shock us. Have you asked God for help? Or are you mad? at him or angry with him because you're under trial today. Diba? Ganon usually response ng karamihan tao. You know? Instead of asking God for help, they're angry with God. Now, God is telling you, telling us right now, you don't have to handle it on your own anymore. You can ask me. You can ask God for help. Do not be shy about it. He loves to give generously and then we just got to watch the miracle happen, you know. And it brings us closer to Him. Kaya gusto niya yun mapalapit, mapalapit ka sa Kanya. You know, ginagapin niyang opportunity ito ng trial para mapalapit ka sa Kanya. Let's trust God. Let's ask Him for help. Amen. Then here's the next point as we finish about trials. Now, in the middle of all that, in the middle of your trial, in the middle of that tough situation and trials, we just got to stand firm in faith. Stand firm in faith. We get to stand firm in faith as God works all this out. You know, verse 6 until 8 says, But when you ask, you must believe and no doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed about by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from God. No, malinaw po sabi don kapag ka nagdadoubt ka, you will not, you know, don't expect to receive anything from God. And now here's the, a bigger theological truth from this verse. Sabi don, faith is, you know, our faith is kind of like our mutual covenant with God. So therefore, our faith in Him, our trust in Him, is precious to God. And James is saying that we got to have that we got to stand in that or else we're gonna miss on all god has for us what does this verse says because such person is double-minded and unstable in all they do wag po natin hayaang yung faith natin mag mawala you know ibig sabihin mag double-minded tayo mag doubt mapalitan yung faith natin amen now, many double-minded Christians were brought out to the surface when we faced, when faced with tough situation. Should we still believe in God for healing? Why are there many people dying? But daming namamatay. You know, imagine like a kid, isang bata, you know, and let's say you're teaching him to jump in the pool. You're teaching him how to swim, and you're and you're inviting him to jump into the pool, no? And you're already on the water, then sabi mo sa anak mo, sa bata, sabi mo, jump. Because it's gonna be okay, just jump. And, and that kid is on the edge of the pool. And, and, and nakikita ka niya, you know. Uh, they, he sees you and they trust what you're saying. But they also see the water, you know, and they also see uh, that it's so deep, you know. In, in, in a situation like that, kid, that kid is usually hesitant. He has a choice to jump, but he's hesitant. You know, I think a lot of us are like that kid. We're on the edge of the pool. We're kind of like in the middle of our trial, but we have a chance to jump in faith, a leap of faith, no matter what the water looks like and trust God is going to be there because he is there but sometimes we waver you know we doubt alam na natin na si Lord inviting us 
but still we're doubting. And God is saying to us, will you trust me on this? Will you trust me on this? This is what God is saying to all of us. Just take your eyes off in everything else and just focus on me, Jesus says. And you know what? If we do that, if we just focus on him, we'll be closer to him without you knowing. Diba? You're just reaching out to him. That's why we need to stand firm on our faith. Don't waver. Don't be shaken. Don't let the trial pull you away from God. No, sa kanya kasi tayo makakuha ng lakas. That's why we need to come closer to Him. Ibang tao kasi kapag na under trial, lumalayo kay Lord. Amen. Saan ka pakukuha ng lakas? Kundi sa kanya lang. Amen. I just want to speak this verse over you prophetically for the last remaining four months of 2021. And whatever trial you're going through right now, I want to declare First Peter chapter 1.7. Sabi rito, And I love the way it was written. Sabi now, this, the trials we're walking through, they will show that our faith at Grace Unlimited is genuine. Now, yung, pong, yung kapag ka nasa trial tayo, itong faith na meron tayo, yung faith na tatunan natin dito sa church natin, will prove to be genuine. They're going to show that we're going to make it true. And it's going to prove that our faith is rooted deeply in God. Amen. It is definitely being tested. So, totoo po yun. Matetest talaga yung faith natin as fire tests and purifies gold. Though our faith is far more precious than mere gold. I mean, look at this next part. Sabi doon, when, so when, hindi doon sabi niya, not if, when. When our faith remains strong, so, let your faith remain strong on this last, on this coming last four months. Let your faith remain strong through many trials because it will bring much praise, glory, and honor on the day when Jesus Christ revealed to the whole world. Wow. Amazing. I mean, what this verse is saying is that's going to be our story. That's going to be our testimony. You know, yung pung naging matatag tayo sa ating faith. No? Once Christ Jesus Christ has come back. No, it, it, it's like giving Him glory and honor dahil naging matatag tayo sa ating faith. That will be our greatest testimony. Amen. We're gonna see a victory. We're gonna see the miracle. We're, if we don't quit, we will win. We don't quit, we will win. Stand firm in your faith. Can I see someone typing there? I will see a victory. That's what we sang earlier. I will see a victory. So now, James, move on to the next section. So we finished talking about trials. Now, we're going to talk about temptations. I feel like I need a background music here. Moving on to temptations. Trials are one thing. Temptations are like the other side of the coin. Think with me for a minute, you know. Did you notice that, did you notice that every time we're in a trial or under trial, we're also being hit with temptation. You know, it's just a different side of the coin. And we need to understand the big picture here. You know, still remember our first lesson? Who still remember the first lesson? God is using trials to mature us. Now, here's the third lesson we can learn from the book of James. Satan wants to use temptation to destroy us. You have to remember that. We have an enemy, and he's trying to destroy us. This first verse about temptation says this. James chapter 1 and verse 13 says this. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. You know, trials happen to us, and we don't have a lot of choice on the situation. We just got to work through them. But temptations are different. You know, they, they happen inside of us. They're stealing on the inside of us, you know. And, and here's the big idea here. We always have a choice of what we do when we are tempted. Temptation is not an obstacle in the road. It's actually a fork in the road. We can go this way or we can go this way. And, and the enemy is always going to try to pull us down on a wrong path. In fact, the practical way to deal with this is 
what teaching us in the book of James tell us that first, we need to understand the process of temptation. Now, I meant to mention this a moment ago that it's very clear that f the first verse that we read earlier, it is not God that is tempting us. Very clear. It is not God who is tempting us. James uses a strong possible language here. He says, God is unable to tempt. There's not many things God can do. He cannot lie, diba? He cannot be unfaithful, sabi niya so, sa 2 Timothy. And he is unable to tempt. No? Yun po yung mga bagay na hindi niya magagawa. And James wants to make it clear, God cannot do that. And th because this is not about God, actually. Temptation is not about God. This is about the sin nature that's inside of us. This is about the enemy trying to tempt us and entice us away. Now, we got to be wise about that and understand that that there's a process to deal with temptation. And if we know the process, again, practically speaking, because the book of James is teaching us a practical ways, in a very practical way, it will help us, you know, instead of being on the defensive, it helps us to be on the offensive. Diba? Parang basketball lang, you know? Kaya nga naisip ko yung Lebron ni James. But anyway, diba mas okay Di ba tayo yung umaatake kesa tayo yung palaging inaatake ng kaaway? Amen? James chapter 1 and verse 14 to 15 says, But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and, and, and ties. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Now, I want you to recognize these four traps that the enemy uses to bring us to temptation. I want you to remember them. You know, it's a trap. You know? And here's the first one. We saw this in the verse we read. Number one is deception. That's the number one trap. Deception. This is a, this is a very old trap of the enemy. Deception started in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Right? Did God really say? Did God really say? And that, that question has sown the seed of deception into all of us since then. You see, deception takes our eyes off from God. And we start to look around for something else. Did God really say that? Is God's way really the best way? Or is my way better than God's way? Should I choose God's way or my way? Do I need God? Maybe I don't need God anymore. Maybe I can do it on my own. Diba? That's deception. Deception is like soil that temptation can grow in it. That's the first trap, deception. Now here's the second trap, desire. Desire. You have to remember, this is not the action of sin yet. This is just again, you know, the enemy working what's inside of us. No? The enemy is turning our desires to become lust, greed, and pride. Just click that. Just visit there. Go here. Be dishonest. You know? It's just a small lie. You know, it's just so white lies. You know? Wala pong kulay ang lie. Lie is a lie. No? Don't be loyal in this relationship. Don't be loyal in this marriage. Don't be loyal in your friendship. No, it can look a million different ways. And the hard thing is that the enemy knows the perfect bait for you and for me. And he will throw it out there trying to catch us. You have to understand those desires. They will steer and they will steer and they will steer. Diba? Pagka umataki ang desires na yan, you know, yung maling desires, Hindi ka mapapakali minsan. And if we don't kill it, we don't stop it right here and there, it will lead to number three, the third trap, which is disobedience. Disobedience now, this is now the act of sin itself. Kasi nag-disobey ka na, no? When we cross that line, it immediately what starts to grow inside of us. And this is now the fourth trap, death. I mean, uh, this is not a physical death. It, this is like a picture of death. Because you will be filled with shame, guilt, condemnation, you know, backslide, hopelessness. Diba? That's a picture of death. Your relationship from God will die. 
But thanks be to God, you know, cause, because our God is a God that resurrects the dead. Amen. We're, we're, we're just going to ask God for His grace. God's a God of grace. He's full of grace and mercy. We ask God for forgiveness and He can restore us once more. That's why today I'm so thankful that you're at church today watching. It's not an accident, no, even if it's online. Actually, the enemy is trying to push you away, tempting you not to join, not to come. Alam ko, maraming temptations ang kaaway para huwag kang umatin ng church today. And God is saying, no, 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 no. Oh, no, not today. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this is a serious matter, you know. We need to understand the process of temptation that sometimes we play around with sin. We thought it's just a game, diba? We just got to understand that no matter what sin looks like, it always leads to death. Kahit pa magandang sin yan, diba? Ganun naman talaga yung sin, eh. Maganda sa paningin mo. Hindi naman mag... Hindi, na, hindi ka naman i, you know, ha, ihaharap ng kaaway harap ang kaaway sa iyo o harap ang tukso sa iyo na may dalawang sungay, may pangil, you know. Hindi sin will always appear nice to the eyes. But remember it will always leads to death because it's in its nature. That's sin nature. Rabbi Zechariah says this. It's a great quote. It's kind of like a classic now. Sabi niya, sin will take you farther than you want to go keep you longer you want to stay, will always cost you more than you want to pay. Now, the only way to get out of the trap of temptation is, again, James is teaching us a practical way. We just need to be real about our weakness. I mean, maging totoo tayo na may weakness tayo. None of us here are too holy. None of us here are too strong enough on our own. We just need to recognize the this can happen to any one of us. Diba? Marami tayong nababalitaan, marami tayong nababasa. Matagal ng worship leader, all of a sudden backslid. You know, isang pastor ng mega church, biglang uh, uh, tumiwalag at uh, binitawan ng kanyang belief. Diba? Doesn't believe, he says he doesn't believe in God anymore. I mean, don't be deceived. Ito yung sabi ni James sa so verse 16. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be deceived by the temptation from the enemy because it can happen to any one of us. So here's the last important lesson that we can learn from the book of James. We can use temptation as a target for growth. Wow. Why do, what do you mean by that, Pastor? When the enemy tempts us, he reveals his battle plan attack to us. And in, in the same way, you know, he's showing us the area in our life when we, where we need God the most, diba? And and that gives us a target for us to grow. So, et, eto yung, yung malalaman na ngayon natin yung area ng buhay natin that we need to grow more and to mature more, diba? Parang, parang ganito lang yan, you know, uh, bumalik sa kaaway yung binato niya sa atin, diba? So, we can fight back against the enemy. Yeah, just like what we were singing earlier, it's also in the book of Genesis chapter 15, verse 20, sabi niya, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You see, God is teaching us, even in the middle of temptation, we can be an overcomer. If we don't quit, we win. Amen. James chapter 1 and verse 17 says this, and every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. You know, I love the tension that James used here between shadows and light. We all know that God is a God of light. And He comes down into any darkness. And, and listen to this, you know, darkness cannot exist when the light is there. Amen. I just felt like somebody needs to type an amen right there. That is so powerful. You have to realize that that. That when we invite God in the area of our life that, that we are tempted, you know, it's kind of like the dark area of our life, He will light the darkness in our life. We don't have to be embarrassed about our temptation. We just have to invite God into that temptation. So being what Lord God, 
this is where I am weak. And the word of God says, where I am weak, there you will be strong. Lord, just invite the Lord to come so that you can be strong. You know, in this way, we're able to fight against the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 says here that no matter what that temptation is, there is a way through it. And it says here, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not lead, let us be tempted beyond what we can bear. And here's the great truth here. But when we are tempted, He also provides a way out so we can stand up underneath it. What a wonderful promise. Hallelujah. Even if we are tempted, He provides a way out so that we can be victorious. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to get real practical with this point, And we're almost finished. But I feel like this is very important for us to understand because, you know, we are getting tempted every single day, always, especially nowadays. You know, there are actually some things that we can do to fight this temptation, practical ways on how we can fight this temptation. All of them are inviting God's light into darkness, you know, into the dark part of our life. And when we apply this in our life, it, you know, it will begin to give us strength. James gave us earlier practical application how we can walk through trials and come out victorious. Now, here are the practical application that James is telling us on how we can overcome and fight temptations. Just four really quick things. Number one, number one is this, avoid the situation. I mean, this seems so obvious, but it's a huge because it's, it's going to be really hard for some people, you know, to become overcomers in the middle of of it i know there are some some realities you're like saying you know i don't know if i can avoid that di ako sure kung kaya kong i-avoid ito di ba sasabihin mo strong ka pero pag nandoon ka na <laughs> may sama sasabi mo i don't know if i can avoid that but you have to remember discernment is the key i mean kung alam mo na talagang mafo-fall ka sa temptation, you know, kung alam mo that it will lead you to to commit sin, avoid mo na. Hindi yung sus- masubukan nga. <laughs> no, avoid it. Amen? Number two, counter with the Word of God. Counter with the Word of God. I mean, come on. Anybody here love the Bible? Amen, hallelujah. And I know for all of us, we don't... We don't just need one verse in 2021. We need about 2,021 verses. Amen. I mean, just get a Bible verse for your situation. Whatever your situation right now, there's a Bible verse for it. There's plenty in the Bible that will help you. It's our weapon. It's our sword. We're going to fight back against the temptation with the Word of God. I'm going to get a word. And I'm going to get a verse and I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to fight the enemy with it and learn how to overcome with the word of God. Amen. That's why we need. Do you have your Bible? Do you have a Bible? I mean, 2021 na, kapatid, wala ka Bible. Amen. I think this is now the right time to get one. Number three, develop healthy friendships. I don't know if you heard about it, but here at Grace Unlimited, we like small groups. You know, we actually have share groups, Bible study. You know, this is where we we study the Word, study the Bible, and grow our and be mature spiritually. You know, I know at the moment we're meeting online via Zoom, but soon, soon enough, we're gonna have it face to face. Our share group once more, Hallelujah! And besides that, we have also different ministry groups. Where you can belong. Amen. We have what we call the Geo Rocks. Taas ang kamay ng mga rocks dyan. Boy pa ba kayo? Amen. Geo Rocks, that's our singles ministry. And we also have the Geo Wings. Asa na yung mga wings dyan? That's our women's ministry. Amen. And we have coming soon our Geo Iron Mans. Hallelujah. That's our men's ministry, right? So if you need an accountability group or where you can connect, just just let us know. Join in any of our ministry groups. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And here's the last one, number four, commit to prayer. I mean, every single day, constant prayer, constant prayer, constant prayer. Spoiler alert. Do you know that the enemy also attacks us every day? So constant prayer is our daily shield and protection against those attacks. Amen. You know, sometimes I struggle a lot of times to remember these things. So if you want to remember this practical application, just remember ACDC. I know this is the worst joke of the day, but it's the best joke I had. So, pagpasensya nyo na. No, ito pong, alam nyo, ito pong bandang ACDC ay may gantang highway to hell. Wow. Parang connected, di ba? So if you don't want to live on a highway to hell, remember, letter A, avoid the situation. C, counter with the word of God. Come on. What's next? D, develop healthy friendship. And C, commit to prayer. All right. I mean, we got the power to overcome. We don't have, we do not have to let the enemy tempt us because we can stand and we can be victorious. Amen. So here's the last point, kind of like the big idea of this message. We can live in victory even in trials and temptations. If we don't quit, we win. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's close our time together in a word of prayer. And I'm going to pray for all of us. And after that, we're going to proceed with our communion. So make sure to ready your bread and juice. Amen. So join me in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Truly, you are faithful and you are more than enough. We thank you for the hope that you bring. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the light that you bring. Thank you for defeating sin and death at the cross. That's why we know when we ask for grace and mercy, we can receive it. And even better than that, you gave us the power of the Holy Spirit and now living inside of us. He who is in me is more powerful than he who is in the world. In Christ Jesus, I am more than conqueror. Believe that. We are the head, not the tail. We are above, not beneath. In Christ Jesus, we can do all things through him who gives us strength. Where, oh, that is your sting. Where, oh, that is your victory. If God is for us, who can be against us? We have the authority to trample on snakes, overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing in Jesus' name will harm grace unlimited. Nothing will harm me, nothing will harm you. No sickness will ever harm you. You are more than a conqueror. You are a child of God. If we don't quit, if we don't quit, you will win. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For our communion, I hope you have your bread and juice with you right now. And uh, we all know <clears throat> what Christ did on the cross. And, and He tells us to remember the sacrifices He did. You know, He paid for our sin. He took the penalty of sin. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, even though we are facing trials and temptation in our life, we can be victorious because... God Himself won the battle for us on that cross. Amen. You know, the bread and the juice represent His body and the blood that was shed on the cross. And right now, <clears throat> I want you to grab your bread and juice. You know, as we partake this, we have to remember what He did in the cross and be thankful that we are here, all here, because of what He did, of what Jesus Christ did. Amen. So right now, as you partake the bread, I want you to, to believe that God has made us whole and no sickness will overcome us in Jesus' name. You can now eat the bread. In the same way, the Jews represent His blood. We can come boldly in the throne of grace of God because of the forgiveness of our sin because of the blood that was shed on the cross. Let us remember all the, what Christ did for us. We can now drink the juice. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Thank you for what you have done 
we receive your healing we receive your forgiveness in jesus name amen amen hallelujah so right now uh for those of you who wants to receive you know all of the things that we learn how to to go through trials victorious and how to overcome temptation i know some of you are you know even in in the moment that uh, you you felt like you're disconnect with god and you want this what you what we have learned today but you recognize at this moment that you never invited jesus in your life but today is the day of your salvation. You just have to give God control over your life and invite Him to come. Taste and see that the Lord is good. No one, disqual no one is disqualified. You are not disqualified. You are accepted. You just have to receive Jesus in your life. If that's the desire of your heart, just pray these words and mean them. I'm going to lead you in prayer. Lord Jesus, Today I give you my life. I repent. I give up control. And I receive your forgiveness. Be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. God, I'm going to give my life to you. And I'm going to live for you. For the rest of my life. Thank you for your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I mean, for those who just made that prayer a reality in their life, you now have a relationship with Jesus. You know, and the Bible says that you will have hope in a future with Him. And if you're looking for a community to join and want to grow spiritually in your new journey of faith, you want to know that Grace Unlimited is always here for you. Just go to this link. Or you can send us a message and someone from our team will reach out to you to pray with you and to answer any question you might have along the way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I think my time is up. Thank you, Jesus, for the word today. And make sure that you join us again next Friday for another topic full of wisdom from the series, The Book of James. And thank you so much to your family for staying with me. It's always been a great time spend with you and i hope that you have learned something today that you can apply in your life whenever you're under trials or temptation and i'm also inviting you to join us today on our online prayer meeting happening right after this live stream link on how to join is flashing on your screen right now hallelujah and lastly i encourage you to to smash that share button but don't smash your phone and let others be blessed by the message of grace we heard today amen i'm praying to see all of you once more very soon stay safe and have a grace filled week ahead god bless you all shalom god bless